Bruce though, it's home design time. And today we are joined by Bryce Glover from House Me to look at the benefits and affordability of living in a transportable home and what the new legislations could mean for the, everyone in this market. Good to have you in the studio, Bryce. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Uh, busy time for you, I guess. Yeah, ridiculously. <laughs> well, that's good. So, so the transportable or the tiny house movement oh. is huge. Pardon the pun, it's huge. So how long has HouseMe been in the business and what changes have you seen in this time? Uh, so HouseMe as a product and a business has been trading in some capacity for almost 14 years now. Um, initially, the founder of the business was building units and adding them to a rental fleet, uh, but we realised the true potential in the business was manufacturing and volume, um, combined with the fact there's no secret that uh, people are short of houses, so it fits perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. So have the types of people who are now wanting to buy and live in a tiny home, have they, are they different? Uh, have you noticed a change about post and you know after COVID as well? There's definitely, I'd say, uh, a few customers that are very, very common. Um, the, the rural sector, so farmer that wants to put uh, one of his workers in some accommodation. And generally, but most popular would just be people that are wanting to downsize. You know, they've, they've gone from living in a 150 square metre house, now they're going, ah, you know, I've got a piece of land over there, I'll chuck one of these on it and sort of simplify my lifestyle. So a lot of that. Well, that's good. And also, I guess, people coming home from overseas too. Yeah, definitely. Um, we are seeing a lot of that at the moment, fortunately and unfortunately. Yeah. So what is the thing that most people want out of their transportable home and, and how do you provide it? Uh, I'd say the, the obvious one would be space. Kind of people getting their head around space. And uh, you know, I wish I had a dollar for it every time someone walked into one of our units and said, oh, wow, there's a lot more space than what I actually thought. Um, so, well, people figuring out that they can live comfortably in a small environment, mm -hmm. if we can tick that box, then uh, we're, we're very, very yeah. popular. So when we're talking tiny homes, what size are we talking? So all of our units are 3 metres at the roof line and 2.8 at the dwelling, and then they just vary in size by length. So our smallest unit would be a 5.2 metre studio, all the way up into our largest, which is 12.5 metres by 3 metres. Um, our most popular product would be our 10.4 by 3 metre deluxe one bedroom, just scrapes in at 29 square metres, um, but it would, you know, would probably sell about 15 of those a month, so extremely popular. Wow, and mm. storage-wise, I guess you've got like lots of nooks and crannies and everything it's is utilised? Yeah, you've got everything you need to survive. It's just, you could almost call it a mini apartment. Oh, I like the sound of that. Tiny home. So one of the main benefits of buying a tiny home is that it is affordable. So how much are we talking and sort of what do you get for that? <laughs> Well, the product I was just talking about, the deluxe one bedroom, that's 71 grand, including GST. Um, on average, if we're talking North Island, you'd probably pay uh, two and a half, three grand for a delivery fee. So throw in a few bells and whistles, landscape your property, it's pretty easy to see you getting change out of 80 grand, which is phenomenal. How is that even possible? Um, so yeah, so that, that the affordability is probably the reason we're experiencing um, substantial growth because people are realising that now there is an option instead of going, ugh, I've got to, you know, scrape up a deposit to get a mortgage to, you know, pay that off over an infinity amount of time and mm. feel like you're not really getting ahead. And also another benefit, I reckon, would be the upkeep. If you wanted to downsize to something, you don't have to worry so much about the maintenance of a huge vacuum house. Vacuum cleaning's pretty easy. Well, exactly, it'd be perfect. You could just get a little battery <laughs> one. Stick vacuum cleaner. So can you have all of your mod cons and is it cosy? So are they insulated? Yeah, definitely. These days it's got to be well insulated. So they're fully insulated, double glazed. Um, as you've seen on the images, you know, you've got floor to ceiling wardrobes, a functional kitchen that I always joke is bigger than my kitchen at home <laughs> in East Auckland. Um, you know, a comfy sized bathroom that also has a space for a washing machine. So, literally, if you do compare it to an apartment, which the average size in Auckland is 28 square metres, you know, it's pretty, pretty good bang for bucks and you're living comfortably as well. Yeah, I guess everything's been designed really nicely too. So, can you, talking about design, the fun stuff, can you, can you pick out your interiors or your colour scheme? What's your. Yeah, definitely. That's where we let the customer personalise it. So, from a manufacturing point of view, we try to keep it simple. If we can do lots of the same thing all the time, we can build them quickly, you know, we can um, do and build them to a high standard. But when it comes to personalising it, the customer can choose their carpet type, bench top style, uh, vinyl, exterior paint and joinery colour as well. So they can put their own spin on it. Wow, so if I wanted it to be a black box, you could make Go it one. It. Yep. You could make it so. Yep. So how easy is the plumbing and the electricity and that sort of stuff to set up? Um, I know there's new legislation, are there changes within that? Yeah, so the plumbing side of things and uh, all the services is what I refer to, uh, they're really, really easy to get set up. So water supply is as simple as plugging in a garden hose. Um, if it's going to be there for a long time, people usually do that a bit more permanent. Garden hose gets you started. Electrically, it's just a caravan extension lead, so you just need a sparky to install a power point and you're away. 
We'll supply the gas bottles for the hot water and the plumbing side of things. It's got a special macerator pump built into it that processes the waste and get junctioned it into your existing sewage network. A uh, macerator, that's such yeah, a great word, yeah, isn't yeah, it? I've heard every variation of that <laughs> word. And let's talk about the new legislation a little bit. Um, it was quite exciting there for a, a time for a tiny homeowners. Have things actually changed? Yeah, you used the word exciting. That's what it felt like at the time. It was definitely exciting, coupled with a bit of confusion. Um, it kind of just got thrown at the industry and everyone went, hold on a minute, so you don't need any more consent. Mm. So, uh, you know, vague probably isn't the right word to use, but there's a little, quite a bit of everyone in the industry trying to understand what it actually meant, because admittedly we're a little bit cynical, you know, for the government just to say, no consents, voila. It was like, yeah, what's the catch here? Um, and there kind of was one. A month later they turned around and said, okay, not quite no consents, you've actually got to go through the, because all the councils put their hand up and said, hold on a minute, yeah. that's not the case. Um, so what they're saying is you've still got to go through a consent process if the unit has plumbing and whatnot. Um, doesn't shoot it out of the water because what we're still seeing is lots of people just buying basic units for the beach or an extra room outside. They might only be 20 square metres, no plumbing, no nothing. In that situation, yes, easy, don't need consent. Yeah. So perfect for that situation. Are all council regulations, are they all the same? Or what would your advice be? Oh, there's two ways to look at it. So the Building Act, that's all the same. Okay, how the councils interpret it, interpret it, that's where someone, myself in the industry... That's where the fun comes yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. That's where I experience inconsistency. And, and that's not um, me being negative. Of A lot of my customers work at the council, and even they testify and say, look, there is a lot of inconsistency, the way we interpret those laws, what is a house, what is a vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. interesting. So, so what would be your biggest advice then to anyone who wants to buy a tiny home? Um, first things first is talk to us, we're the professionals, you know, we build them, we do 250 plus units a year, so we're very experienced, we're well rehearsed, you know, we deal with a lot of the different council departments and we've had um, dealings with government and whatnot, so talk to us, tell us what you want, um, let's have a conversation about that first and foremost, and then we can offer advice on what to do, what the next step is. Um, uh, one of our salespeople, Livy, she's got 10 plus years industry experience. She's probably one of the most experienced in the industry, so um, I'm always learning off her. Okay, so she knows everything about consents and what you can and can't do. So start off with us. If you're a little bit unsure, then we'll point you in the direction of your local council. Go knock on their door, have a phone call with them and just find out you know, what the actual rules are specific to your property. Excellent stuff, good advice. Bryce, thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, appreciate it. And for more information, you can head to houseme.co.nz. And for great design and decorating inspiration, go into your nearest Razine colour shop or visit razine.co.nz. Mm -hmm.